Hello everyone, this is Josh for Circle Circle Math on Instagram. Today I'm going to show you how to create these little drippy, melty face pieces that I do pretty frequently on my page. I'm definitely not the first person to do this. I drew a lot of inspiration from other artists. Um, try to make it my own over this period and I hope you can too after watching this. Alright, uh, so to get into it. Usually I just bring my photo in. Uh, today I'm working with a piece called, or by Ronaldo Kevin from Unsplash. Thank you for putting that on there, Ronaldo. Um, so yeah, I start off by cropping the image um, to my liking. Usually I get in pretty tight on the face just to make it um, a little more dynamic the effect. If you get too far away, it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, then if I need to, I'll clean up the background. Probably going to take this little piece out using the clone stamp, which is Command S. Then you select your area and mask it out. gonna do it like this so I'll come back through and blend it later um, for the blending since I'm gonna add film grain later on it's not that important right now um, to make sure it's the exact same um, as the background so to get the shadow right I'm gonna select the mixer brush um, hold option select my little area I want to blend in the color to just kind of even out the tones uh, make sure I don't get that little layer at the bottom and yeah it'll make more sense later on alright so now I have a rasterized layer I'm going to start by making a smart layer so I can come back and edit it if I need to uh, without having to go back so many steps so this whole technique is done in the tool called Liquify. Um, you can use the nudge tool, but the options are pretty limited on this. And uh, I don't know. There's, I think Liquify is the better way to go about this. All right, so I'm going to go to my smart layer, press Command Shift X, which is Liquify tool. And this whole thing is just using the smudge tool, setting the pressure to 100 and the density to 100. Um, all of this, the rate, keep it at zero, or the size, whatever size you need for your image. So you're just going to click and drag down little by little. And that's pretty much the whole technique. Um, like I said, I made it my own, started adding color and different kind of things to it, but at the heart of it, this is all it is. Um, the bigger the brush, the more you're going to pull. Like you can do the whole face, which a lot of people do, just make it melt down. Um, you lose the drippiness, I think, the bigger the brush is. If the brush is too small, you're just going to do like fine little edges and uh, not really pull too much down. It could take a long time. I usually use the smaller brushes for detailing in the end. So that's it. Um, what I've done recently is add color to that, like I mentioned. So what I do to add color is create a new layer. I usually work off some kind of color in the background or, you know, use color theory to do contrasting colors to whatever I'm working with. So right here I can do pink and blue to match the background. And on my new blank layer, I just go through. I don't like that. It's not, not blue enough. Probably means the pink is not pink enough, too. Oh, I'm on the mixer brush still. Haha. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll fill in the eye area. Never really get close to the top because it'd be 
hard to blend in. I definitely use a soft brush instead of the um, hardness. That way um kind of fades in a little bit more natural or as natural as this can get, I guess. <sighs> I've been doing a lot of the uh, vomit kind of coming out of the mouth as well. Uh, so add some down here for this effect. This is kind of the same as the last tutorial where I showed you the pulling through the head uh, paint. So I usually grab those two layers, group them together uh, using Command G, and then Command J to copy the group, Command E to flatten it, then I will convert it to another smart object. Press Command Shift X to go back to the liquify step and do what I just showed you. Just pull it down little by little, following the curves of the face and the contour of the shape, like down here. Let's say it hits her hand. I'd make it drip, and obviously going to pull extra so you have to come back in and clean that up later with a mask and spend a little bit more time. I'm going to make it run down like that. Usually I don't think I'd use so many colors in the mouth. It kind of looks like weird cotton candy. I think uh, if I was actually making a piece I would spend a little bit more time on this area but yeah um, you'll see that it grabs all of this extra skin and that's something that I like to clean up after the fact that way it doesn't just look like it falls down I mean for stuff like the mouth might as well just grab a big old brush down same with the eyes and yeah I may fast forward through this part it gets kind of boring if you're spending a lot of time on this I think the more you spend on it the better it ends up looking so I'll probably come back through and complete this in a second. Um, I do, like I said, get the smaller brush strokes, kind of make it all jagged, not so clean. It's all really your own style, I guess, whatever your preferences are. Definitely helps blending in the, the stuff. Alright, so... I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't really know what else to show you about that. Um, so after I do that layer, uh, no, that's weird. I copy this, Command J, delete the smart filter, drag it underneath, and then add a mask on top to the layer. and come back through with my brush on the mask and get out all that extra skin that I pulled down um, with the effect. I mean sometimes I like to leave some like that. It kind of looks like it's risen. And like I said, it's all about your own style. And like right, right down there, that even adds to the effect. It's kind of cool. Uh, same with this. I don't want it to look like it dried your skin. So I'll clean all this up. Maybe just cr press shift, make a straight little line from it.
Well, that's about it for this. All right, and then when I'm done, I will group that together once again. Command J, Command E to flatten it. I love working with smart objects. It's probably why my files get so large. Um, and then Command Shift A, after it's on the smart object, will open up the camera raw filter. And this way you can come back through, uh, just like the temperature, balance, tint. Um, I don't really mess with the clarity unless I'm editing from a raw file. And um, if that's the case, I do that first. Never really after the fact. Um, what I do a lot is turn up the vibrancy, turn down the saturation a little bit. You know, do all the curves to your personal liking. Sometimes I'll get in here and adjust like the blues, whatever I need to do. Um, I always turn my um, teals a little green and my blues a little teal. Um, same with the highlights. I usually do this. It makes the skin look a little green, but the photos end up being like a little aged or vintage. Um, I know I mentioned that in my last tutorial. Oranges are tricky because usually the skin is either in the yellow or the orange tone and that's always hard to mess with but maybe lighten it up a bit the contrast um, calibration for the cameras kind of set it up like that most times kind of go with the picture though and then usually the very last thing I do is come back through with the grain from the effects part and just make it look a little saturated blends in the two pictures together and really kind of completes it yeah so that's about it guys um, I hope this was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me um, via Instagram I'll usually try to answer anything and you know tag me uh, if you make something with this I'd love to see what you do and how this technique evolves into your own style um, and not just something that I would make anyways um, Alright guys, thank you so much.